All right, so this brief video is going to be removing the fuel tank of a Piper PA32-260. Uh, the procedures are pretty much the same for PA32 main tanks that have the four tank system and the PA28 that has the, the main tank like this. So tools we'll need. The service bolt we're actually gonna be completing today is Piper's service bulletin 1006. This has to do with um, corrosion on the spar and stuff behind here, but we're gonna take this tank out. We're gonna replace the fuel sender gasket and replace all the fuel, fuel lines and vent lines. We're gonna be doing that with the kit from Airward. So this company, Airward, makes a kind of an all-inclusive kit that has all the replacement parts you would have to order separately. Fuel sender gaskets, vent hoses, new fuel li supply lines, and Dynatrol AV8 corrosion treatment to treat the spar when you're done. So I'd recommend using them. It makes it pretty easy. You can source all these parts individually, but uh, the price isn't that much more to just buy the kit and it saves a headache. So what are we going to need to complete the 1006 service bolt and basic set of tools? Um, for this job, if the tank has never been out and had replacement screw, structural screws put in, uh, it may be a bear to do that job. But you got to start by taking out all of the screws around the tank top and bottom. There's a bunch. The screws that are along the spar line are actually just a little bit longer than the ones that run along the side of the tank. So there's the, the spar screws and there's the tank screw or the side rails of all the screws. So take all those out. Um, I urge you to use a speed handle versus just a drill. If you strip these screws out, uh, it turns your day into a very, very, very long day, which you probably will think sucks. So um, I like to use a speed handle with a 45 offset, offset bit. If these screws haven't been replaced before, you can put a little bit of a valve grinding compound on the top of that and then push all your weight into the screw as you turn it with the speed handle. Uh, like I said, we're, we're hoping we don't have to cut these off. If they are, that's a long day. Uh, fortunately, this tank's been out before. At least the screws have been replaced. So these are stainless. That's the upgrade version. These are structural screws. You can't just replace it with a generic screw. <clears throat> so those are structural stainless. So the tools we're going to need to take this out. Speed handle. You're going to need <clears throat> a couple 5 8 wrenches. A couple 11 16 wrenches. A 1 inch wrench. Um, here's another 11 16 a stubby. And then a long tap at 5 eighths and 11 sixteenths. So the idea to get access to this first. <clears throat> oh, well, it doesn't really matter the order. Drain the fuel. Um, you can drain it through this. What I usually do is have the customer just uh, consume as much fuel as they can out of the tanks first. Flying it just saves how much time you're going to drain. Uh, this one had about five gallons left in it. So I just opened the petcock and put it into a funnel. But anyway, so pull your landing gear cover. And then you need to get access to the wheel inside the landing gear compartment. And then there's a fuel line here. This goes, this is your feed line to the tank. And that connects to that union right there. So that union is a one inch and this fitting's an 11 16th. So disconnect that. Um, that'll give you some movement. When we start taking the tank out, we're gonna slide that tank forward and that will give you a little bit of slack to slide the tank out. Once that's disconnected there, like I said, you don't necessarily have to do it in this order. It just happened to be the order that I did it. While the fuel was draining, I went and took out all the screws. All the screws. Make sure all that, those are out first. And then what you do is that should lift the, the edge of the tank just a tad, and you can grab it with your fingertips. And we're just going to slide that tank forward. Now with that fuel line connected, it's going to be a little bit of effort to push this. Resist taking a hammer and smashing against this to try and jam it forward. If we damage that tank, that's a pretty expensive repair. Uh, so we're going to try and slide this tank forward off the leading. Remember, it's part of the leading edge. Once you get a little space in there, you can kind of grab it with your fingers and pull a little bit. That fuel line being connected in the back will only allow you access to a point where it'll open maybe about an inch. 
It'll be about an inch on the top. <clears throat> and then you'll get an inch on the bottom. The problem is you can't... The problem with that is the fuel line goes right through here to connect to the tank. That's this line. We'll disconnect that to give us the slack so we can push this tank forward. And at that point, you can reach the, uh, the fuel line right on the other side of here. I actually like working through the top better because the top kind of folds down and then you can get behind it the tank so right in there that's the the fuel supply line so I've disconnected that line but it's easiest to get through the top here I think disconnect that line and then before you pull super far you'll have to disconnect the fuel sender line so that screw there goes into that wire you disconnect that it's either a phillips or a flat or a um, man i'm lost my words it's either a phillips or a regular screwdriver flathead or whatever um disconnect that sometimes there's a knife splice but that one's just directly to that and this one i'm pulling mainly because it's leaking fuel that sender is so we'll replace that gas but while we're in here we're going to comply with that service bolt and we'll do an inspection so get that dis fuel line disconnected. Then you just take the, the tank and it slides forward. If it's empty, it's real light. Just want to make sure you're not dragging on anything. Take the tank out and we'll just set it over here. So there's the tank on some pad. And now you can get a good look at the inside structure of your wing. What we're mainly looking for obviously any types of corrosion but what happens on these is water can get in the seam here and drip down this if it's left outside and then you'll see um, corrosion up in these areas where that water sits so we're going to do a real good visual along these points if there's light corrosion there's methods to remove it and treat it um, if not if it looks clean we're actually we'll, we'll clean it up we'll vacuum it we'll wipe it down and then we'll treat it with the uh aviate dinatrol corrosion treatment anyway just to ensure that corrosion doesn't form or we have some protection to get but since you got the tank out you got a pretty good window into everything inside the structure which you usually can't see very well just from the main landing gear access hole so take a little bit of time go through you know inspect all your openings get a vacuum in there clean out stuff treat it as needed do a good inspection <clears throat> So when we're done, part of that service bolt is to replace that fuel line. It's this line. Uh, if you got a hose, you might be able to date it. October of 1967. So we can formally say that this service bolt has probably never been completed. So it's a good time to do it anyway. But so we're going to replace that fuel line. That's part of the kit. I uh, will get this and then you can shift your focus to the tank. <clears throat> so these inspections, you're looking at the fuel line, you know, evidence of fuel stains and stuff here. That hopefully is all intact. Here are the fuel sender. Uh, that was leaking. Not a lot, but um, enough where you, I, I could see it on the outside here. So I, that's the main reason I want to pull this tank, but also to do the service bolton. Um, we're, so we're going to replace these lines, we're going to put a new gasket on there. On the front, or the, the side of the tank by the filler, there's the vent line, we're going to replace that. So all those soft hoses we're going to replace, those brittle ho rubber hoses we're going to replace, we're going to replace that center gasket and we're going to replace the main feed line. So that's the tank out. That's how you get it out. Uh, installation uh, is pretty much reverse. We'll take all of our components. We'll utilize, we'll follow the service bolt. And we'll put a new fuel line in here. We'll reconnect this. And then we'll slide that whole assembly on. And we'll tighten all our fittings through these two holes. And then we'll uh, remount all our screws. When you do the screws, make sure the long ones go back in these holes. Uh, as part of the installation, just to keep them coming in and out easy if we ever have to do it again, or when we have to do it again, is put just a tiny dab of anti-seize on that before you run the screw in. 
<clears throat> long ones in the back, short ones along the sides. And that's a wing tank removal on a Piper PA-28 or 32. All right, now that you're going back in with the tank, um, these screws, I would start all of them. Don't tighten any of them down until you've started all of them. Top, bottom, that goes without saying for most things like spinners or where there's a ton of, a lot of screws in a single panel. Start them all first by hand and then you can take your uh, speed handle and tighten them down to whatever they do. So start them all by hand then tighten them up to secure the tank.